Hello, and welcome back to Nevermore Hollows, the town where the plants grow human organs and the spirits of long-dead blues men haunt hundred-year-old guitars. I am Lafayette Faust, and I collect and tell these stories to convince you of the truth of a spiritual realm that is in constant battle for our souls. I would also like to take this uh, opportunity to say hello to a new friend over at the podcast Into the Darkness. He is one of us, the freaks who like a good scare because it helps us appreciate life so much more deeply. He does an amazing job at reviewing some of the fringe horror movies that are out there. If you are so inclined, please make him a friend by giving his podcast a listen. We can do with more friends, right? When the apocalypse happens, we're going to need as many as we can get. Tonight, our evil little monkey, Psycho Juju, decides to play a game. I promise you it will be twisted and disturbing. So, I invite you to sit back, turn on a light, and prepare yourself. Amber Anderson opened her eyes. It was completely dark, as if she were in a tomb. Her mind was fogged. She was confused. She was sitting. On the floor, maybe? No, a chair. She was in a chair. I need to clear my head, she thought. Breathe. Just breathe. A few seconds, or maybe an hour, passed as she waited for the ragged remnants of the fog to lift. Finally, she was able to think more clearly. Where am I? How did I get here? Why? She took each of those questions in order. Where? Though it was dark, it did not feel as if she were in a confined space. No. Wherever she was, it was a larger room. She was not bound by any restraint, so she used her hands to explore the chair. It was metal and wood. It was a folding chair. There were similar chairs on each side of her, like the kind you find in an old auditorium. Beyond that, she could tell nothing more. How? She had been on a picnic at Lovecraft Park with her husband Brad and Tommy, her three-year-old son. It had been a glorious day with birds chirping and butterflies flitting through golden sunbeams. She had excused herself and made her way down a tree-lined path to the block building that housed the restrooms. Just as she reached the building, a puppy bolted from the woods and ran toward her. It was trailing its leash and appeared to be lost. She had scanned the area looking for the owner, but saw no one. In fact, she was alone and out of sight of her family. She knelt down to check the collar when, oh dear God, no. Someone had come up from behind and put something over her face. That's the last thing she could remember. Someone drugged me. With chloroform? Her heart raced. She began to hyperventilate. I need to calm down. Stay focused. Try to understand why this is happening. Someone laughed. It was deep with an inhuman edge. Who? Who's there? She cringed at the quaver in her voice. Again, the laugh. Then... I am the host of tonight's special program. Suddenly, stage lights flickered on, revealing that she was sitting in the front row of the old theater located on Phantom Lane. It had been abandoned last year when the owners realized that the citizens of Nevermore Hollows no longer cared about live theater. On the stage before her were four doors. They were functioning stage props that sat in frames that could be rolled out from the wings when needed. On each door was a number. Each number had been scrawled in blood. Standing center stage in front of the doors was a clown. 
She wore white tights with candy red stripes, a thigh-length white dress with red and blue polka dots, and black combat boots. Her face was covered with white grease paint. Her lips and eyes were smeared black, making her look cadaverous. In her left hand, she held a gun. Amber was familiar with guns and alarmed to see that the one the clown held was a three fifty seven Magnum. It was a massive handgun that would cause maximum damage. Again, the disturbing laughter. The clown looked stage right. Amber followed her gaze. From the wings of the stage walked a capuchin monkey. It was twice the size of a normal capuchin, and it was wearing a red suit with black polka dots and a black bow tie. Its face was also smeared in white grease paint, and around each eye was scrawled a ragged swirl. The monkey strode over to stand beside the clown and faced Amber. She realized that it was not polka dots on his suit, but tiny pentagrams. I am Psycho Juju, your host. And this sad sack of blood and bone is Pity the Clown. She will be my assistant for tonight's game. Amber shot a glance around the theater. She was alone. The stage lights caused deep shadows to huddle and writhe in the corners. She turned her attention back to the monkey, her mind swirling as she tried to understand how it was speaking. Ventriloquism, she thought. The clown is a ventriloquist, and she is throwing her voice, making it seem as if the monkey is speaking. I know what you're thinking. Psycho Juju said, but you're wrong. It is me that is speaking, not the clown. And it's because of some very ancient and dark magic. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get to our game. Amber's current situation was terrifying, difficult to wrap her mind around, and possibly deadly but she was a fighter. No, I refuse to play any kind of game with you. Psycho Juju's lips pulled back into a simian smile that displayed his four razor-sharp fangs. Oh, you are such a rebellious little kitten, aren't you? I like that in my playthings. You are going to make this game so much fun. I mean it, Amber said. I won't play any kind of game with you. Psycho Juju chuckled. Oh, kitten, but you will. You see, you either play or I'll have pity here make a delightful mess of your brains. She could run but a bullet from the clown's gun was faster. Besides, the doors were all chained and padlocked on the outside. There was only one way out, which was the door used to carry her into the theater, and she would likely be unsuccessful in finding it fast enough to survive. She pushed her fear down deep. The only way she survived this was to be present, aware, prepared to act when an opportunity to escape presented itself. For now, she was at the mercy of this evil little monkey. Okay, what are the rules? They are simple, he replied. There are four doors. Behind one is a way out of this nightmare. Your first choice is between door number one and door number two. Okay, Amber said. Let's get this over with. Door number one. I'm disappointed in you, kitten. The monkey said. That was such an obvious choice. He turned to the clown. 
Let's see what's behind door number one. The clown's eyes were vacant, with no spark of life. She stepped over and twisted the knob. The door swung open, revealing a wooden stool, upon which sat a white cardboard box, about the size of a shoebox. Bright, crimson blood seeped from inside the box and dribbled onto the stool. Oh, I wonder whatever could be inside the box. First, let's see the special prize that you did not pick. The clown shuffled over to door number two. She opened it to reveal a second wooden stool. On top of this stool was a basket. Sitting in the basket was the puppy that had been used to distract her when she had been kidnapped. The puppy sat with its big puppy eyes wide and wagged its tail in delight. The clown raised the gun to the puppy's head and pulled the trigger. No! Amber yelled. Why did you do that? You sick bastard! Psycho Juju laughed. Did you think this was going to be some child's game with no consequences? I thought you might be smarter than that. Now, it's time to choose again. The box. Or door number three. Amber's mind raced. She looked at the clown and saw that the puppy's blood had sprayed onto her face. She looked at Psycho Juju. His black, swirly eye makeup was disorienting. Why are you doing this? He chuckled. <laughs> because I love watching you wretched creatures suffer. Now choose this lovely blood splattered box or door number three. There's no way I win this game, Amber said. The deck is stacked against me. I refuse. Psycho Juju snapped his fingers. The clown turned to face the evil little beast. Her eyes remained vacant. Kitten doesn't want to play my game, he said. Let's show her what happens when we don't play the game. Pity stepped over to the basket that contained the puppy's corpse. She reached inside the basket and retrieved a carving knife. She then slowly pushed the knife into her thigh. Amber was mortified. Stop! Just stop it! Pity pulled the knife from her thigh and slowly slid it into her abdomen. Blood seeped through her white dress, creating a gory polka dot that stood out in disgusting contrast to the pattern on her dress. Please, Amanda yelled. I'll play. Just stop. Pity did not remove the knife. She left it sticking from her stomach. She then stepped over and stood beside door number three. That was Delightful, Psycho Juju said. He turned his attention back to Amanda. Now, choose. Amanda closed her eyes to think. The monkey was so completely evil that she could not trust that the game would not have more bloodshed. There was also no way to play this game and survive. He meant for her to die here tonight. Her only chance, meager as it may be, was to be bold. Pity had a gun in her hand and a knife in her stomach. If she should somehow get control of the gun, she could escape. Hell, she'd even take the knife at this point. She had no choice but to continue to play until she could see an opening. Considering she was not restrained, and needing to get closer to the clown, she decided to test the boundaries of what this vile beast would allow. She stood 
and took a couple steps toward the stage, pretending she was trying to get a glimpse around the door. Ah, no, no, no. Psycho Juju said. No peeking. She stopped two steps from the stage, surprised he did not force her to return to her seat. She looked at the bleeding box. Whatever was inside the box was likely sick and disgusting. She felt he was manipulating her with the gore, as if he wanted her to be so repulsed that she would choose the door. She would not be manipulated like this. So, hoping to foil his twisted scheme, she said, I choose the box. Psycho Juju sniggered. <laughs> well, that seems to have been unpredictable. Amber did not like his sarcastic tone. It worried her. He turned to the clown and said, Pity. Would you please reveal to our contestant what she could have had instead of this bloody mess of a box? Pity twisted the knob with no indication that she felt the knife sticking out of her or that a stream of blood ran from the wound in her thigh. She pushed the door open and Amber screamed in rage. She had been played. Psycho Juju had been in control all along and had staged the scene to manipulate her into picking the box. Her heart ached at the choice she made because she had chosen wrong. Sitting tied to a chair was her husband, Brad. He was gagged with a dirty towel. His head drooped onto his chest. No, 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 this can't be happening. This is cheating. Psycho Juju's fangs gleamed in his smile. Silly woman, never trust evil. Brad groaned and raised his head. His eyes were red and wet. But when he caught sight of Amber, they cleared and shot wide. Pity stepped forward, raised the gun, and pulled the trigger. <laughs> Amber screamed her rage at the clown, at the carnage, at the simian monster that stood before her. She rushed the stage, scrambled up, and ran straight for the monkey. He juked to the left, away from door number three and the clown. This is what she had hoped would happen. She juked to the right and crashed into Pity. They hit the floor and slid through her husband's blood. Pity dropped the gun and they both squirmed around and crawled to grab it. Though the clown was in a near catatonic state, she was incredibly strong. Psycho Juju leaped once, twice in wicked glee at the deadly struggle. Then, to Amber's surprise, he leaped onto Pity's back and began tearing out her hair in big clumps, laughing all the while. He used his fingers to claw at her face, tearing ragged wounds that seeped blood. Pity continued to crawl toward the gun, making no sound even though the monkey was now biting her head, back, and arms. Pity slackened as blood sprayed. Amber saw her chance. She let go of the clown's legs and scrambled past the carnage and grabbed the gun. She turned, aimed at the monkey, and pulled the trigger. The hammer fell with a hollow clack. Psycho Juju sat atop the now-dead clown. Blood smeared his grease paint and dripped from his mouth. He gave a feral grin, baring his fangs. No. What you expected, he said. Amber again pulled the trigger. Clack. She pulled it three more times. Clack, clack, clack. There had been only two bullets in the gun. This only pressed upon her how complete her manipulation had been. Psycho Juju had staged this down to every decision. 
He had been in complete control. He knew he only needed two bullets, one for the puppy and one for her husband. And by not tying her to the chair, he left her free to attack Pity and tried to gain control of the gun. And now that she had it and realized it was empty, to what purpose? You wanted me to get the gun, she said. Yes. Why? What are you trying to prove? Psycho Juju stood defiant atop the clown's body. Oh, little kitten. I'm not trying to prove anything. I simply want to savor your despair. The look in your eyes when you pulled the trigger and realized you'd never even had a choice was... It made me quiver. But why kill her and not me? You were supposed to overpower her, but I saw that she was stronger than you. Had she gotten to the gun first, I would have been robbed of seeing you lose hope. Killing is fun, but seeing hope die is exquisite. Amber was surprised that the gun was empty. Her heart ached for Brad. It was soul-crushing loss. But she still had hope she could survive this twisted encounter and be reunited with her son. She looked at the bleeding box. She had known that whatever was inside would be disturbing and disgusting. But a sudden thought forced one precious word from her lips. Tommy. Oh, please, do take a look in the box, Psycho Juju said. Amber's mind reeled as if she were on a hellish tilt-a-whirl. The light inside her dimmed. She found herself standing over the box, her hands trembling as if with palsy as she removed the lid and dropped it to the floor. For a moment, her mind refused to accept what she saw in the box. It was Tommy's favorite shirt. The one with the dinosaurs. The one he was wearing at the picnic. It was soaked with blood. She could see that the shirt covered something. Tears welled up in her eyes as she removed the shirt to reveal a gleaming bullet. It was the exact caliber to fit the gun she had just taken from Pity. As I promised, he said, a way out of this sweet, sweet nightmare. Even now, she was being manipulated. The damned monkey wanted her to use this bullet to take her own life. But the human heart is designed to harbor hope, and she refused to give in to the terrible reality that had been presented to her. Where's my son? Psycho Juju shrugged. Poor little Tommy didn't make it. Such a tragedy. Amber began to cry. No, you didn't. Oh, but I did, Psycho Juju said. You're a demon, Psycho Juju chuckled. It was as deep as the pit and as dark as the abyss. <laughs> Bingo. She recalled scenes from the picnic the smile on Brad's face as he chased Tommy around the fountain, and the way that Tommy giggled when Brad snatched him up and tickled him. She felt a sob claw its way from her chest and tears slithered down her cheeks. Why? Why not? said Psycho Juju. The fact that this evil little beast had done all this for no other reason than he seemed to be bored gnawed at her soul. The seeming randomness of it all threatened her belief that order triumphs over chaos. 
There has to be a reason you chose me, she heard herself say. What is it? Psycho Juju's eyes burned a deep red, and she thought she could see terrible things squirming in those voids. If you must know, then I'll tell you the truth. He grimaced as he said the word truth, as if it left a foul taste in his mouth. I know what you do for a living. You help drug addicts get clean. You bring peace to troubled souls. And you create order from chaos. I can't abide. So this wasn't completely random. There was a reason. This monster had come after her, had taken her husband and her child just to break her because she tried to be a good person. She felt anger rise up from her soul and spread like a white-hot heat through her body. It stilled her resolve and brought clarity to her troubled mind. Psycho Juju's eyes narrowed as he watched her. You're all alone now. That bullet is your only salvation. From a life of regret and despair. Do it. Put the gun to your head and pull the trigger. I can't go on, she thought. Everything I lived for is dead. She snapped open the cylinder and loaded the bullet into the gun. Tears scrolled down her face. Her hands shook. Oh, you are so close to ending your suffering psycho juju said so close to sweet oblivion her dad taught her that evil was a very real force and that it roamed the earth manifesting itself in myriad ways with its ultimate goal being the ruination of humanity he taught her that the best way to fight evil was to be a servant to those in need he had also warned her that some day, because of her efforts to serve, she would find herself under attack, and no matter what, she must fight. But my family is dead, she thought. How do I go on living without them? Just do it, Psycho Juju whispered. And the two things popped into her mind. The first was that if she put a bullet into her brain to stop her suffering, she was letting evil win. The second was that he was being too persistent in his efforts to encourage her suicide. But why? This evil little bastard would not have missed the opportunity to display her son's lifeless body in the ultimate act of breaking her. Suddenly... She remembered that because of the warm day, Tommy had removed his shirt. He had tossed it aside. He wasn't wearing the shirt. Maybe Tommy had escaped. If so, Psycho Juju must have grabbed his shirt and covered it in blood as a ruse. Hope flooded her heart. Tommy isn't dead, she said. You weren't able to abduct him. He's free and he needs me. Psycho Juju frowned. Oh, he said. I was so close. Amber pointed the gun at him. Where is my son? Psycho Juju sighed. That stupid clown was supposed to wait until after I subdued you. I was going to snatch the boy while she grabbed your husband. But she moved too quickly and her husband was able to fend her off while the boy ran to safety. So, I, I had to play the game with what I had. I wanted to break you so that you believed me when I told you little Donnie didn't make it. Amber's righteous anger blazed and she pulled the trigger. Her aim was true, and the bullet slammed center mass into Psycho Juju. It flung him back against the frame of door number one. 
The ragged hole in his chest oozed thick black blood. She was surprised when he began to laugh. He pushed himself up and locked eyes with hers. The game didn't end the way I wanted. But oh, I had so much fun. He turned and scampered into the deep shadows of the auditorium. Amber waited until her ears stopped ringing from the gunshot. Then she stepped around Pity's body and cautiously made her way backstage. She found an unlocked door that opened onto an alleyway. The only light came from a hazy moon. She ran down the alley and turned the corner onto Stoker Lane just as Deputy Ian Zane drove by on his nightly rounds. Amber flagged him down and was able to keep her tears at bay until she had told her story. To her surprise, the deputy didn't seem to think she was crazy when she told him about Psycho Juju. Instead, he used his cell to call the sheriff. I found Amber, he said, and that damn monkey has escaped. Deputy Zane then called for an ambulance which arrived within ten minutes. The paramedics were attending to her when Sheriff Mosley arrived. He got out of his cruiser and strode over. He was a man of average height, but the confidence he exuded made him seem bigger, more formidable. Once he had spoken with the paramedics to ensure she was okay, he led her to the side and asked her to tell him everything that had happened. When she was done, he said, As you now know, monsters are real, and this demon-possessed monkey has declared war on the town. We've been looking for you since you were taken. Your son is safe. He's shaken up, but he told us that Brad saved him from the clown. Can I go to him? Of course, Mosley said. I'll have Deputy Zane take you. Can I ask you a question? Amber said. Yes. I hit him directly in the chest with a round from a three fifty seven magnum. He laughed and ran off. Why didn't it kill him? Mosley pushed his Stetson back as he considered his response. I don't believe evil can be killed by conventional means. We can only wound it when it possesses a mortal body. Amber shivered as she considered his response. If that's true, can we ever win? Mosley put a hand on her shoulder. She felt his strength, and he felt hers. Every time we stop evil, even if it's only for a moment, it's a victory. She considered what Mosley said as she wrote in Deputy Zane's cruiser. From this moment on, she would educate herself and Tommy to the dark reality of this town but she would not let this terrible truth poison her belief in goodness and order, nor let it taint her joy. Because if she did, evil won. And that was simply unacceptable. Her silent promise to herself and Tommy was that they would live life to the fullest, help those in need, and let their faith in the ultimate triumph of goodness to be a light in the darkness. And that was a promise she intended to keep. <laughs>